Good afternoon, I'm Matthew Sheehan, and tomorrow sees the start of one of the most famous races in the world, the Rolex Fastnet race. is a family affair and my next guest is indeed two families we've got Damien Smith and his daughter Alexandra along with Mark Denton at the end and his son Freddie and they're all sailing together um, first Damien you're the owner first of all tell us about the boat uh, yeah, we, we, we're racing on a boat called Simple. She's an XP44. Uh, this is the second fast net that we've done uh, since I've owned Simples. Um, mostly found com combining offshore racing and performance 40 in the Solents. Um, but we're, we're one of the longest but heaviest uh, boats in that class. So we're sort of looking forward to the conditions tomorrow. It gives us an opportunity upwind to stretch our legs before the uh, slightly lighter boats come past us on the way back. We just think they haven't got ovens on board. You've got another advantage there. Ovens, well. Mike. Well, we don't have microwave, but you know, your stereo. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> is this the first time that you've sailed with so many friends and family, or is that how you normally sail? We, I've built a crew over the last five years of people that I've either coached sailing as youth or and met through family friends, and so we really try and keep it as a keen uh, youngsters event with experience. Mark and uh, you know, on board and, and, and bring, give opportunity to friends and family, so it's whether it's through the sailing club, through dinghy or, or just, just friends that we've met on the way. Mm. So uh, Alexandra, how long have you been offshore sailing? Uh, not long. I did my first offshore race this year, um, which was a good experience uh, because my dad kind of mentioned doing the fast net race to me and I thought, why not? It, it's a really good experience, something I've never done before. Um, so yeah, it's very new to me. And what have you found, what's really stood out so far in the, in the offshore racing that you've done? What do you enjoy the most about it? I think the whole thing is just so different, you know, doing the overnight sailing as well as during the day, managing sleep, just the whole experience is so different to anything I've done before in sailing. So. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. Mark, um, I'll just jump to you. As a former BT Global Challenge skipper, offshore sailing's your bag uh, and very much your thing. Tell us a bit about wh what's the big appeal of the fastnet? Yeah, um, so we, well, I mean, we love our offshore, and uh, you know, this forecast is is pretty similar to what we used to experience in the Global Challenge. So hopefully, we can remember how to handle some of that. It was a good few years ago now, but the fast net is is a, a real particular race. It's intense. It's only three or four days long. Um, a, a race of that length, you don't um, really have time to get into it. Your body to adjust to it. So it's a real challenge mentally physically tactically i mean it's a coastal race uh, it's it's just a really demanding race um and as Dee was saying earlier on just to stay focused and keep your energy up you know all the way to the end is a really really big challenge mm -hmm. yeah freddie i hope he hasn't put you off by saying that <laughs> no he really hasn't i'm really looking forward to it oh yeah what's what's drawn you to it why, why do you want to do it um i guess it's just a kind of lifelong dream really we always used to come out and watch the starts when I was really young and I always used to almost get a bit jealous when all the boats would be going off and we'd have to go back and stay on shore and you know following always been really interested in the BT Global Challenge even, obviously I was born way after it happened but still seeing the photos and hearing the stories and things just really draw me to it yeah mm, excellent and how much have you how long have you been sailing offshore so this is my first uh, season of proper offshore racing I did a bit of inshore racing last year just to kind of get into it and learn the boat but this is my first year of doing yeah proper offshores and a full season so it's a good year to start with fast now yeah excellent well done I'm very envious <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was coming too thank you very much for joining us and good luck thank you
This is BBC Radio 4, where now it's time for the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency at 0015 on Sunday the 8th of August. There are warnings of gales in Thames and Dover. The general synopsis at 1800. Low South East Mountain. So, Demian, morning of the fast net. How are you feeling? I'm really excited, actually. I'm wanting to go, get, get a move on. Conditions are going to be pretty hard in the first 24 hours, but simple. Uh, built for it and in great condition. And, um, yeah, just really excited to get going. Cool. So, look, we've got new Nemesis displays on for this race. What's your thoughts on them, early thoughts on them? Well, I'm loving the visibility, full stop. Um, you know, from, from, from the steering position compared to the old HV 2020s, I, uh, it's, it's amazing. And then the amount of data and the choice. We haven't worked out what the, the best data to show is, but um, already I'm being able to compare targets with actual boat speed. Um, and so looking forward to really putting them to use in the, in the, next, in the next 48 hours. Welcome to coverage of the 2021 Rolex Fastnet Race on Fastnet Live 87.9 FM, also on RolexFastnetRace.com, on Facebook, on YouTube. I'm Simon Viger, based at the Royal Yacht Squadron, the most famous start line in yachting. I'm joined by a galaxy of sailing stars. Pip Hare, star of the Vendee Globe, is uh, with me. Yachting journalist Louis Habib is here too. Out on the B&G Instruments commentary rib is round-the-world racer and former winner of the Rolex Fastnet Race Abby Ayler and calling the shots out on the rib with her, my co-commentator Matt Sheehan. It's certainly uh, out towards the outer end of the line. People are just marching down this line and bearing off a little bit just to make sure they stay behind it. That in itself is quite tricky. A big score, a big gust has come through. 28, 29 knots of breeze has just come through here. But Storm Vogel looking really very comfortable out here, isn't she, Abby? She starts at the pin end, she's strapped down, everybody looks relaxed and they're just going for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's watching the comparison between Storm Vogel and these Figaro 3s who are sort of midline uh, sails flapping, just trying to time their start. Yeah, what a different scenario we're looking at here. All clear on that start.
day two of the fast net. We are about six, seven miles south of Eddiston. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, it's been pretty, pretty tough since we started. Uh, big seas, lots of wind. The wind's ameliorated now. The sea state's still really choppy. Uh, we're making good progress, surrounded by class 40, so um, uh, they've obviously found the upward leg much harder than we have. live from uh, the uh, Fastnet race course of the Simples. And uh, we've had a pretty good uh, first 24 hours. It was brutal, as predicted. And uh, having just heard that 55 boats retired in that first 24 hours, quite honestly, I'm just grateful to still be on the race course. Um, we're lying 15th in IRC, so we've got work to do. Uh, but to be honest, last night was just survival. And so I think some boats were again and others Perhaps not so much. We had a reasonable night, I think, but uh, as ever, when you look back, perhaps there's a couple of times you've done something differently. But uh, you know, what has been helping us out are these uh, new Nemesis screens, real game changer. Just the amount of data that we're monitoring on, uh, on the boat's performance um, just allows us to be a lot more on our game. And, and if we're not on our game, this, this is telling us to play. So, uh, you know, really. Really good advancement in, uh, in onboard instruments. So, uh, really grateful to have them on board and to uh, be giving them a good old test in the fast. So, look, um, we're 24 hours uh, through. We'll, uh, we'll update you uh, as we go on the rest of the race. So, guys, first day's gone and we're into day two. What's going on on board Simples? And drying out. And how are we doing? We just heard that 55 boats had to retire over that first 24 hours. So what's, what's our thoughts, even though we're in 15, what's our thoughts? Simples, uh, let's have a chat with our esteemed owner, Mr. Demian Smith. Demian, your thoughts at this time of the race? Oh, it's wonderful. Um, I'm a glutton for punishment and we've had plenty of it, but it's um, great fun. The sun's out, We're just landing the lizard. Conditions are good. Um, Irish Sea looks a bit challenging. Sadly, we've missed the tidal gate, um, but then for the breaks, we'll work out how to deal with it. I think the crew are all happy. The ship's in Bristol fashion, so we're all good. Awesome stuff, onwards.
looks fast at race 2021. Up the front in the bow we have the sail loft, which is also a kit drying spot. It's all pushed back because we are absolutely pounding through the waves, but it's neat and tidy and most of all dry ish. Then we've got the heads up the front, which doesn't get used because you fly off. And then working our way back, we've got Kit, just waking up. We've got Rich, just waking up. And then we've got Navstone. Yes, it's And we've got Mark, having some crisps. Hydration station sink. We got Freddy keeping an eye on things at the front. We got bunks, drying socks, and more bunks. We've had to do a few repairs on the lead cloths because we've got some fat boys that broke them all in the heavy winds, but they're holding up now. Another important point, and often a underlooked part of offshore racing, is making sure you get your downtime and you take the rest when you get it. So here am I in my bunk, having just come off watch. I just on a four-hour watch between two and six. Champagne sailing conditions. We've had 15 knots at a sort of a true wind angle of about uh, 80 degrees, 90 degrees. Cracked the sails, absolutely flying. Not much uh, uh, wave action um, or swell. So we've been making really great progress as we try and catch up with some of the boats that we lost last night um, when we missed the tidal gate at the Lizard, which was very disappointing. We ended up in a um, uh, in a position with lots of tide and almost no wind and actually were drifting for a while as we tried to pass the runnel light um, and then the rocks just up um, on the west coast of Cornish coast um, inside the eastern boundaries of the Sydney TSS. It's a bit stressful at times and very dull as we had almost no wind for three to four hours. Anyway we finally transitioned and we're making good progress across the RSC. Um, who knows whether there'll be more compression when um, some of the front boats hit the uh, channel after the Sillies when the wind is forecast to drop out again and so we may gain back some places. Anyway, all is good on the good ship Simples, crew are well, uh, we're having a lot of fun and good spirits um, and we'll report further. Bye for now. Sailing in sunshine and uh, t-shirts. Uh, everybody's feeling pretty well at the 
the moment. Uh, burning the rock last night, visibility was nigh on zero. It was a very dark night, lots of fog. We've got you helping me at the moment because she's the only one who can deal with the waves. So um, that's working massively successfully. Um, all in all, I think we're all having a good time, aren't we, everybody? Oh, yes. Freddie, our youngest crew member, who's currently sitting over the winch, grinding for Hannah, which I shall pan across to you very shortly. We have Rich on the far side, just observing what's going on down to Lewis. I'm slowly panning across. Here we have Mark, who's doing an amazing job on the helm, keeping an eye on everybody on this watch. We've got Kit working the main. And we have the lovely Hannah, very, very busy, waving there on kite trim and as a pan round to kite trim that is our afternoon's weather beautiful afternoon out here i think we're now officially back not in the celtic sea anymore i don't know and there we have our lovely big orange a kite tangerine dream as Hannah just said and uh, in there we also have our readouts and uh winds a little soft but we're making good progress have to drive down the course and um, just coming all the way back round past the bank to Freddy. Bye. So, Kit, evening of day four, where the hell are we? Um, yeah, good question. Uh, I think we're coming up to Silly Arms. Um, struggling a bit with the wind, literally dying on us, um, but yeah, looking to try and go as fast as we can in the right sort of direction, um, and yeah, hopefully make some gains um, tonight, and yeah. Nice sunset all the same? Yeah, it's all right, it's nice, <laughs> glad it's not raining, unlike this morning, <laughs> yeah. which is pretty miserable, um, so yeah, nice to have some sunshine, uh, just need a bit more wind. Day five. Uh, where are we and what's going on? Uh, we are, um, I don't know, about 60 miles out of Cherbourg. Um, uh, maybe a bit more, we've got about 12 hours to go. Uh, winds up, we just got the A2 up and we're absolutely sending it. Um, top speed so far, 16.7 knots. Um, absolutely fantastic additions for our last two watches. Flying along. Late lunch, full pork.
done. Awesome job, gang. Oh, I'm gonna just hit you with some light here. Uh, Demian Smith, finish of the fast net. How do you feel? Absolutely brilliant, especially as we've just um, come through nine boats on the way to the finish line um, who got stuck in adverse tide. So, um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. We've worked really hard. Teams work, had great fun working together. A lot of youngsters on board, you know, 15 year old and 16 year olds who've just delivered um, a really tough fast net. Um, and the first of the races to Sherbo. Absolutely brilliant. Awesome stuff. Well done. Well done, Thank Damien. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome, mate. Mark. Brilliant. Great to see Good you. job. This is the party and the welcome party. Alexandra has smoked salmon and cream cheese already. There are some beers. Yours, obviously. Cut that stage light, go and shine on down Got that Bob Barker suit game and Plinko in my style Money, stay on my craft and stick around for those pounds But I do that to pass the torch and put on for my town Trust me, on my IND. Mm -hmm.